starting with a uh, lift off and Forrester and welcome to the 11th installment in my Kerbal Space Program series No Kerbals Died the hard mode career where I look to keep our adorable green astronauts alive throughout for this episode our fledgling space program is launching the tried and tested lunar module design and faring it across for a moon landing as we have main engine cutoff and staging I have sped up the footage here just because uh, there's a lot to get through and I'm trying to keep these videos down to 10 minutes. So I have a single Kerbal on this launch. It does have some safety features on the launch, so I've got the launch escape system atop as well as some emergency parachutes if required. But this is a tried and tested design, so I'm hoping that will not be necessary. Cruise up to an apoapsis. At this point, going to go ahead and deploy the fairing, jettison the launch escape system, and prepare to circularize the orbit. We've gone for second engine cutoff, and there is the orbit circularized. So with the Lunar Module launched, we're going to launch the Juno Command Module. So this mission is Juno 2. Again, a tried and tested design, so we have a liftoff. Should be a fairly straightforward mission. The one key thing that I'll be doing a little bit differently from the last Juno mission is landing on the moon rather than Minmus, which does require additional engine power. Plotting down the main engine on the Juno stack as prepare for SRB separation. And then tilting the rocket. So as the avid commentators on previous videos have pointed out, this is not the most efficient launch profile. We've gone quite high here before starting to make the gravity turn. The reason for that is just because of the length of the stack compared to the structure of the stack. Uh, and just the way that those solid rocket boosters operate, it's for the sake of safety. As I do upgrade the rocket and look to improve things, we'll be having a more efficient ascent profile, but at this point, safety is the name of the game. So we've got the main engine cutoff. So again, just a single Kerbal on this Juno 2 rocket, and that's because I have got the Kerbal occupying the Lunar Module, and I'd like to bring them both home safely. So I'll need that extra passenger seat in the rocket for bringing them home. So here, just pushing up the apoapsis, and I'm looking like I've got a fairly good distance there to the Lunar Module. Jets in the launch escape system. And cruising nicely up to launch altitude. And go ahead here and just circularize and go for second engine cutoff just so that, that stage falls neatly back down to Kerbin and then optimize for the rendezvous with the lunar module. So for the actual Apollo missions, the lunar module, or the lunar excursion module as it used to be called, uh, was launched as part of the Saturn V stack, whereas I've clearly here launched them separately. Uh, that's due to a number of very Kerbal reasons, particularly uh, looking at the weight, the cost and the power which limits my launches at this point in the tech tree. So that's why I've launched the two separately. Um, I'm also going into orbit first and then making my Muna burn. Requires a little bit more delta V than uh, a direct ascent, but uh, we can afford that and it's a little bit safer to do so. And the advantage of having two controllable vehicles here is that I can actually use each of them to face the docking ports towards each other. So there we are, I'm an hour into the launch of the Juno 2 rocket. 
and an hour and a half into the launch of the lunar module so it hasn't taken long for us to get both launches completed uh, a single orbit around for the lunar module and there we have docking so at this point planning out the burn just to go and encounter the moon I've got a few different missions here so I've got uh, data from space around the moon, data from the surface of the moon and plant a flag on the moon as well as bring a moonstone back so a number of different contracts here which uh, give a good opportunity to generate some funds for our space program which are much needed right now interestingly the uh, four commsats that were launched in episode 8 here are getting a good signal across on the lunar module even out as far as the moon here and here we're just decelerating in uh, our intersection of the moon and there we have it achieved moon at all And then just bring that down a little bit further so we've got a nice low orbit. And we'll undock the lunar module and just plan out the routes that we can grab our moon rock. So here I've checked the contract in the uh, space center just to find out exactly where I need to go in order to collect this moon rock or find this moon rock and actually I've potentially got an opportunity to visit a couple of different biomes here if I play it right so as I'm collecting mad science so we're going to land in the crater this is apparently the best place to be looking for moon rocks and just bringing that speed under control let's deploy the landing legs so one of the useful features in the more recent versions of Kerbal Space Program is the radar altimeters. You know actually how far off the surface you are, which really, really helps. And here just gingerly on the throttle, keeping the speed under control. And then we have a nice gentle touchdown onto the lunar surface so collecting all of the science that we can get here as well as of course planting that flag which is a contract requirement hopping back on board and here I'm just gonna grab another couple of contracts and head out to grab a moonstone so quickly up in the air quickly back down because I can see a moonstone over there which I'm gonna go grab There we have it, and um, back to the lunar module. And then back into takeoff. So here, just making sure that I can achieve a good orbit of the moon again, which I have only got a little bit of delta V remaining. So I'm just gonna use up the last of that fuel and I'm gonna use the command module to make the rendezvous. So a little bit different here in terms of the way that the lunar module is. It's designed to be reusable. Now in this instance, I'm not actually reusing it. Um, I'm gonna drop it off into Kerbin just so that it's not here as moon junk because I'm gonna have a, a nicer lunar module for some of the future landings. Uh, but there's just a single engine on it, whereas the actual lunar modules were two stage. There we have rendezvous. and capture so go ahead and transfer everything that i need to to the command module i'm going to take both of these elements back to kerbin and just let the lunar module burn up in the atmosphere not uncommon uh, i think three or four of the actual lunar models modules did end up burning up in the atmosphere um, mostly intentionally i might add so bringing back this moon rock um interestingly uh, there was a number of moon rocks that have been retrieved over the years predominantly by the US program but a small number by the Russian lunar program just there as I 
ditch the lunar module so it will re-enter the atmosphere. One of the most interesting stories I think about moon rocks is from Apollo 17 where they returned a, a rock which had loads of different fragments in it and President Nixon split that and gave a piece to um, all 50 of the US states, it was 50 at the time, it's 1973, something like that, um, as well as uh, all of the heads of states of the countries around the world. So there's um, a little bit of moon rock in most of the countries of the world now as we re-enter the atmosphere. I do like flying a tried and tested design. This Juno rocket clearly proven itself previously as the chutes deploy and we go for a nice gentle splashdown. Thanks so much for watching. Pleased to announce no kerbals were harmed in the making of this video.